the roughest water I won't go under, I won't drown And when I'm in over my head I know that you won't let me down And when I'm broken And down to nothing I know that you are always up to something good I know that you are always up to something good You'll make a way whatever it takes There's nothing your love won't endure I know that you are always up to something good The deepest valley You go before me You are here And for I know You'll never leave me Your love surrounds me I won't fear And when I'm broken And down to nothing I know that you are always up to something good Something good Through the darkest night Through the darkest night You are on my side You are always faithful Through my fear and doubt You will lead me out You are always able Through the darkest night Welcome. My name is Jesse. I am the Associate Pastor of Worship and Arts here at CCC, and I am just so glad that you're joining us today for worship. You know, for me, in the last few days, I've seen things on the news and in our world that I never would have thought I'd ever see. Things that I find myself becoming really discouraged by, that really unsettle me. And I have these moments where I feel despair, where I feel incredibly discouraged and, and my joy kind of leaves me. Uh, but I, I came upon this psalm that reminded me of something. It's a, in, in Psalm 34, it says this. It says, Taste and see that the Lord is good. Oh, the joys of those who take refuge in him. And I'll, I'll say, when I read this psalm, it reminded me that I don't have to be, I don't have to starve for goodness because the Lord is good. All I have to do is taste and see that the Lord is good. 
And the beauty in this is, is in, in these times of uncertainty, in these times of confusion and violence and chaos, we may feel like we're unsafe, that we're exposed, that we're vulnerable, but we can take refuge in the Lord. We can take refuge in him. And, and when it, we take refuge in him, there is joy. So I want us to take a moment to think about the goodness of God, the goodness of Jesus. That we we aren't weak if we take refuge in him. That's what he wants. He wants us to take refuge in him. there we will find our joy. We will taste and see that he is good. So I want to sing this song called King of My Heart. And it is all about the goodness of God. So let's be reminded of the goodness of God today. Let the King of My Heart be the mountain where I run, the fountain I drink from, oh, he is my song. Let the king of my heart be the shadow where I hide, the ransom for my life, oh, he is my song. You are good, good. The king of my heart Be the wind inside my sails The anchor in the waves Oh, he is my song Let the king of my heart Be the fire inside my veins The echo of my days Oh, he is my song You are good
As we enter into communion today, if you have not yet gathered your elements, take this moment to do so. At the beginning of Joshua, um, God is talking to Joshua, encouraging him as he takes over the leadership from Moses. And several times throughout the first chapter, um, I count four, but there might be more, uh, God tells Joshua, be strong and courageous as he enters into this new, new challenge he's been given, new, new quest. Um, and that feels very fitting for us as we enter into 2021 from 2020, which was kind of crazy, and just in a new year in general, that we are being called to step into something new, that we, are, are, we have traveled through the wilderness and it is, we are tired, and yet God is calling us to more and to new and to be strong in that and courageous and that he's going to be with us throughout all of it. In fact, even verse 9 says, be strong and courageous, do not be frightened, do not be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you you go. Talk about communion. God is with us. He's communing with us wherever we go, wherever he sends us. I think that is so encouraging for me, at least, for where we are right now. So I'm going to take you, give you a moment to think about that, reflect on it as we ready our hearts to take the elements. The night Jesus sat with his disciples around the table before he was crucified, he took the bread and he broke it and he passed it around and he said, take and eat, this is my body. And when he had, afterwards he took the cup and he gave thanks and he gave it to them and said, drink from this all of you for this is my blood poured out of the covenant which is poured out for you for the gift forgiveness of your sins. Lord, thank you for calling us into new things and providing the courage to step into them and the energy to step into them. Thank you for being with us, having purpose for us in our lives. We love you so very much. Be with us today. Here, mending it. 
stop, you never stop working Even when I don't see it, you're working Even when I don't feel it, you're working You never stop, you never stop working You never stop, oh time when there are so many ways to go and we don't know which way or maybe God maybe we feel differently maybe we feel there is no way but God this song reminds us that you are our way maker a miracle worker and that's what we need So Jesus says, we prepare our hearts. We ask that you would open our ears for what you have to say to us today. We ask this in your name. Amen. Thank you, Jesse, for leading us in our time of music and Amy through our time of communion. As we begin and and jump into God's word, uh, we're going to begin a new series today. But I want us to begin um, this morning in a time of prayer. This week has been, as, as the past year has been, a trying time. It's been very difficult It's been difficult to watch, it's been difficult to process, to understand, and because of all of the things that have happened in our nation's capital and in some of the transitions and the political transitions that are taking place, it has been difficult to to walk through this for many people. On Thursday, I sent out a letter to uh, via email to our congregation and also posted on Facebook. And I said this, it was enough, it, it would be enough if this was the only difficulty we were facing this day, speaking of what happened at the Capitol. But add to it the unrest due to health crisis, mental health challenges, and spiritual neglect. It is easy for us to find opinionated reaction, but it is important for us to step back in prayerful reliance on God. Let us allow him to give us the direction that we need. I pointed towards Psalm 85. It's a call for revival. It's a call in the earlier part of the chapter that God would revive us to his presence and that we would be aware of his salvation, that he would bring us his peace. And so this morning, as we get into God's word, I want us to spend some time in prayer together. Those verses in Psalm 85 that I quoted, verses 8 through 11, I want us to use as our guide for prayer as we begin this morning. Would you join me and gather those that are close to you in your home 
and gather them around and spend some time vocally. Even I'll give you a pause for a few moments at times and allow you time to pray together. Maybe you can vocalize in your home. You can vocalize prayers around um, these verses and around what is taking place in our world today. Let's turn our hearts towards what God would have for us in Psalm 85. Would you bow and pray with me? Lord God, it has been a trying time. It has been a difficult year, and uh, we are coming before you with our hearts bowed before you, God humbled and asking for you to speak to us. Lord, as the psalmist has written, it says, Let me hear what God the Lord will speak. For he will speak peace to his people, to his saints, but let them not turn back to folly. God, I pray that you would hear our voices that call out for your voice to speak your peace to us. Lord, I pray that you would protect us and keep us from any folly that we may pursue as a reaction to the things that we see. And listen as we lift our voices in our homes to you now. The psalmist continues, Surely his salvation is near to those who fear him, that glory may dwell in our land. Steadfast love and faithfulness meet. Righteousness and peace kiss each other. Faithfulness springs up from the ground and righteousness looks down from the sky. God, we ask all of those things that we would see meet together. God, that we would see your steadfast, hesed love surrounding all around us. God, in your faithfulness that lays out the path before us, your righteousness that lifts us up, that shows us the path that we are to take, and your peace and your salvation that your glory may shine among your people. God, hear us as we cry out to you for you to revive our hearts as we turn toward you. God, we lay these things before you, and we ask that you would hear us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you for sharing in that time of prayer. I think it is um, so important and, and began really um, a, a little over a month ago as we got into the Advent season to call a church to prayer that we would spend time praying and fasting each week. There were some people that joined in with some of those groups and, and that discussion around praying and fasting. But I think even more so now, I think it is time for us to get on our knees before God, to lift up our requests to him, that he would revive our hearts, that he would draw us back to him because there are so many battles being fought all around us. It is hard to discern a lot of what is taking place in the world. Well, today in that spirit, um, I, I believe that God has led me to begin in the book of Joshua. To begin the book of Joshua because what Joshua's message is all about is courageous living. It is being strong and courageous in the things that we are called to, what God has called us to. And stepping out in faith and following no matter how unusual or difficult it may be feel, or seen. But we have to hear God's word and his lead before we can step into those uncomfortable places. And so today, as we begin in the book of Joshua, I want us to just to consider this story. The book of Joshua is, is a story of courage, as I mentioned, and conquest, that God is leading and finishing what was started with Moses, finishing with Joshua. Joshua's name means salvation. He's bringing salvation to God's people, carrying them in to the promised land. And so in this, I want you to consider just for a moment the battles that have been fought in, leading up to where Joshua finds himself 
where he is leading God's people into the promised land. But before that, they were wandering in the wilderness. They were wandering around wondering, should we go back to Egypt? Is God leading us to some place? Are we going to give our hearts to these idols that we can create ourselves? Are we going to follow the law and the morals that God has given us? Are we going to turn our hearts towards him or are we going to try to selfishly try to redeem ourselves? Well, it began in an episode in the book of Exodus when Moses found himself before God and a burning bush. And God called out to him and said, you're going to lead my people out of slavery, out of Egypt, and toward the promised land. And in all of this wilderness traveling, Moses gave to them the story of his people, the story of Abraham, of Isaac, and of Jacob, the story of Joseph and how they got connected into Egypt as he led them toward where God would ultimately have them in the promised land, bringing salvation to his people. But all along the way, there were battles. There was a battle for Moses. Moses was hesitant to lead God's people. He was hesitant because he had, it seems that he had a speech impediment. He had, he stumbled over his, his words. And as he did so, he resisted a little bit what God was calling him to do. There was a battle and tension there. There was a battle with Pharaoh. There was a battle against Pharaoh standing against God and his people as as God was leading them out of Egypt and out of slavery. He was losing all of his labor that he had built up. And so there was resistance in that. There was a battle there. There was a battle with God's people as they um, looked to God and, and to worship him, or were they going to look to the things that they could melt and the metals that they had and the things that they could create in an idol of a golden calf? There was a battle for the hearts of God's people, a battle that ultimately ended in the lives of an entire generation, waiting for the next generation to come in order that God would lead them to revive them and bring his salvation. Joshua comes in right as Moses dies. And as Joshua takes on the leadership of God's people, the call is in that first chapter, as Amy mentioned during communion, the call is over and over again, uh, four times over, be strong and courageous, be very strong and, and very courageous. And, and the call is that God's presence is going to be with Joshua and his people as he leads them forward. But there's battles along the way. The spies are sent into the land. They, are, they, they look at what is ahead of them. And they are evaluating going into Jericho and, and taking over these different areas. Where I want us to begin in this study, we're going to start in chapter 5, and then we're going to go back in chapter 1, beginning next week. In chapter 5, there's an unusual encounter. It's an encounter between Joshua and the commander of the Lord's army, this mysterious figure that um, just comes up and and sore drawn, and, and Joshua is not sure what to do in response to this warrior that is standing in his path. And so we're going to take a look at how Joshua handles this. The interaction that they have, I think, is important for us to consider because Joshua is getting ready to take God's people into battle. And the commander of the Lord's army was standing there and giving some instruction, some instruction that I think we can take to heart today. I wonder if we begin with a little personal reflection right now. What are the battles that you are facing in your life? What are the things that you are confronting right now, whether it be in one of those areas that I listed before? Maybe it's a physical ailment. Maybe it's a physical difficulty that you are trying to overcome. You're trying to get past. You're working with with doctors or um, others to help you get through something that is physically challenging in life. That might be a battle that is going on. It may be a mental battle. 
and maybe something just psychologically that you're trying to sort out meaning and purpose you're fighting through depression you're 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 battling the isolation that has come from all of these times maybe that those mental battles are are pushing against you and and providing resistance in life maybe you're fighting one of these political battles maybe you're considering where you stand on the political spectrum and you're thinking that I've got to take a stand, I've got to um, do something in this world because the system is broken. Maybe you're coming from the left side, the right side, and, and you're thinking things have to be made right in the political system, in the arena that we have in front of us in America. Maybe that is a battle that you're fighting inside right now and something that you're maybe even fighting verbally with others. I wonder if there may be spiritual battles going on and spiritual battles that we are not even aware of that influence all of those other areas. I wonder if there are spiritual battles because in all of the isolation in all of the difficulties and all of the challenges that we have had to face. I wonder if maybe the spiritual battle that we are fighting is a battle that has come about because of neglect, because we have just taken on our own battles rather than leaning in and trusting in God's power. Rather than leaning into and trusting that God can lead us through, that his voice will come through the noise and that he will come to us, that he won't leave us alone. Maybe the spiritual battle that you fight is one that you have just turned and neglected your relationship with God. Whatever battle you may be fighting today, I want to encourage you that this call is going to shake what you're thinking about that battle. I I think there's some important things here that Joshua confronts as he sees the commander of the Lord's army. I think it's something that needs to penetrate our hearts and souls, and it needs to turn our hearts and our souls out towards God in worship. You know, in, in the midst of those battles that we have, and, you know, many times there are parenting battles and difficulties and, and battles at work that we may have over ethical issues and, and difficulties that come our way. And there's a question that comes about, a question that, is, um, that comes up many times is, is this, uh, is this a hill that, I'm wor- that is worth dying on? Is this a, is this a battle that is worth losing over and, and, and the cost that could be involved in order to fight it. You know, I wonder if we have asked that question in the midst of these battles, if we have considered the fallout that could come from the battles that we are fighting. I wonder if we have even identified what hill it is that we are on, or if because of all of the pandemic difficulties, if we have found ourselves in a place to where we just want to fight, where we just want to march on to something and we're not even really sure what that hill looks like. We draw lines, we create sides. Are you on my side or am I on your side? Who is allied together? Battles are interesting things. And Joshua finds himself getting ready to go into battle over Jericho. And as he is preparing for that, he confronts the commander of the Lord's army. Here's what it says in the beginning in Joshua chapter 5 and beginning in verse 13. Joshua chapter 5, beginning in verse 13, it says this, When Joshua was by Jericho, he lifted up his eyes and looked And behold, a man was standing before him with his drawn sword in his hand. And Joshua went to him and said to him, Are you for us or for our adversaries? Interesting confrontation that comes about. that Somebody is is standing there with a sword drawn. Obviously, Joshua is going to want to understand 
you know, how is this going to go? How is this, how is this all going to unfold? I bet he's playing scenarios out in his mind of, of what is going to happen. Is this, are we going to go to blows? You know, this, this sword is drawn and it's ready to go. And so he asked the question and, and it's a, it's an important question, I think, and, and a question that we naturally go to. It's, it's a question of, are you for me or are you for my enemies? Are you on this side? Or are you on that side? You know, that's, that's a lot of what I see today in our culture, in our discussions. That's a lot of what I see in the interactions with many people. I had discussions with a couple of people this week and, and one was talking about an interaction they had and they said they hadn't seen many people during all of this time. And there was one time where a few friends got together and when they did, it became a tense battle because everyone was just wanting to fight and trying to figure out whose side are you on? Right now, I think maybe even more than ever, we are trying to draw battle lines. We're trying to determine, are you for Trump? Are you for Biden? Are you for wearing masks? Or are you not for wearing masks? Do you think this is all a hoax or is this a pandemic that has infected and is dangerous in, in all of the world? You know, we, we want to decide which, which way are we leaning, which side are people on. We want to draw those lines. And Joshua was doing just that here. He was, he was asking this, this commander before he even knows who he is, whose side are you on? Are you on our side? Are you on our side? Because generally what we do is we think our side is right. And Joshua is coming from the perspective that God is, we are God's people and God is on our side. And so you should be for us if you are um, standing and ready for battle because we are going to be the winners. I think all of us kind of take that posture on when it comes to battles in our lives. But the response comes from this mysterious figure in an interesting way. Joshua says, are you for us or for our adversaries? And he said, no. This is, this is an interesting point, and I think maybe the most important piece, other than what Joshua is called to do at the end, this is the important transition that I think we need to hear right now in the midst of all of the battles that are being fought all around us and that we feel like we need to engage in. Because we want to draw the lines and say, are you on my side? Or are you on their side? We make an us versus them type of scenario. And what the commander of the Lord's army says is like, no, I'm not on your side or the other side. I am on the side of God. He says this, he says, no, but I am the commander of the army of the Lord. Now I have come. And Joshua fell on his face to the earth and worshiped and said to him, what does my Lord say to his servant? I think, you know, this, this scenario is, is something that we need to, this is the interaction I think that we need to have in our hearts to where we have picked our battle lines. We have picked a side that we are on and we need to get on our knees, we need to bow before God and we need to say, God, are you on my side? Are you on their side? And listen to God say to us in our hearts, no. And then from that point where Joshua falls on his face in order to say, well, what is it that you have for me to do? I think that's the place that we need to get to. We need to hear the voice of God that says, here is your next step. Here is where the battle lines are actually drawn in my character. Here's, here's the place where you should fight. Here is the place where you should back down. Here is the place where you should be courageous, where you should be strong. And this is a place where you should maybe pull back. There's an interesting scene in the movie First Night. And, and the, the gauntlet is is 
wound up and started and there are big balls, heavy weighted balls that are swinging back and forth. There are knife blades that are going back and forth. And the call is from the king that, that if you can run the gauntlet, then you can have a kiss from the queen. And so then they get up there and they, they run through and the one knight that had come up and he just almost recklessly goes through this gauntlet and, and the king comes to him and says, no one has ever done that before. How, do you, how did you do that? How did you navigate it? And he thinks for a second and says, well, you know, sometimes when people feel like they should move forward, they should pull back. And sometimes when they feel like they should pull back and they're afraid, they should move forward. And so by almost reversing the psychology of what should and shouldn't be or the perception of what should and shouldn't be, he made it all the way through the gauntlet. I think maybe we need to step back a minute and consider what it's going to take to walk in life currently. We, are, we find ourselves in a very volatile time. We find ourselves in a, in a time where those battle lines are drawn and where we are fighting for or against something. But maybe the time is for us to bow down and say, God, what does your side say? What, what are you calling me to do? What do I need to say and speak into other people's lives? How do I need to pray for my friends and my own health? How, how is this all going to work through and what is the next best step for me to take? I think in all of our battles right now, we need to come to the place where we are humbly saying, God, we are your servants and God, we are here to worship you and we are here to respond to your leading rather than where I feel like I need to fight. Continues on and the finish of this passage is very much like what we saw with Moses at the burning bush. It says this, and the commander of the, of the Lord's army said to Joshua, take off your sandals from your feet for the place where you are standing is holy. And Joshua did so. You know, the sandals represented the, the strength and the power of a warrior to launch into battle. It's not the weapon that is there, but it's the power that comes from his body and, and protects his feet as he moves and marches and shifts and changes. And this commander of the Lord's army says, you need to remove those symbols of power in your life. You need to, you need to check your ego at the door because you are in the presence of God. You are on holy ground that is set apart for God's purpose, not for your side simply to win. And so I think this is a call just as our call has been to prayer and our call before that was to prayer and fasting that we all should, as God's people, we should get down on our knees before God the battle that we need to fight is a battle in our own spiritual hearts. It's a battle of spiritual neglect that we come back and we say, okay, God, I want to be on your page. I'm not trying to get you on my page. I'm not trying to persuade all of those around me to get on my side or fight against those who I perceive are against me. But I want to be on your page. I want to live strong and courageously in all of these unpredictable times that are around us. I want to live strong and courageously because I am on my knees fighting in the Lord's army. God's battle, not my own personal pursuit. So I come back here at the end to ask you, what are those battles that you are fighting? Is it a hill worth dying on? Can you even define what the hill is? Maybe it's something at work, a tension with coworkers. Maybe it's something at home, tension within the house. Maybe it's something within you personally. Maybe it's a struggle for purpose and meaning. 
Maybe it's a fight in this political realm. Whatever it may be, I want to invite you today to lay it on the altar of God's presence and ask God, what is it are you calling me to do? How do I worship you in the midst of this tension and this battle? And allow God to call you to courageous living in these unpredictable times. Would you bow and pray with me? God, I ask that you would lead each one of us. God, that you would give us a heart of courage, that you would give us your strength to step forward in your will and your way. God, we pray that that path would become clear in front of us. Lord, that we would no longer be fighting our own personal battles, but that, God, we would be hearing how you want us to proceed. And God, as we study your word and and what Joshua does and looking back at the steps that they take, God, I pray that you speak to our hearts that you would show us what some of those next steps are in our lives. God, make us courageous. Courageous people for you. And God, we pray this in your name and for your glory. Amen. for joining us today at Conifer Community Church. Again, if you are new with us today, I would encourage you to fill out the connection card online. Also, there's an opportunity to give. And if you want to participate through worship in giving, please find that giving tab, or you can find it on our website at coniferCC.org. I want to encourage everyone to get engaged within a small group coming up here in the next few weeks. If you would like to be a part of that, please email me at pastorlance at coniferCC.org, and I'll make sure that you get involved in a small group. Now for our benediction, may God's grace be with you. May God bring us to his side, and may we live courageously in unpredictable times. Peace be with you.